So I am back. So is the dog next door. Apologies for the barking. So I've been doing some research, some debugging, some debunking about the results that I saw in the stream today. And I've come up with some interesting data points. Firstly, as you can see here, we have a dead board again. Now this is the same board that I used in my stream and I'm powering it from my notebook the same way I did in my stream. The only difference between how I left it on the stream when it was working and now is that I've put a button on here, which doesn't affect anything, and I've put a 330 ohm resistor back on the data line, which broke it before and it's rebroken it again. Now, I'm using my Mac notebook. It's being powered by a USB-C port, which is a USB 3.1 Gen 2 port and it's powering it at roughly 5.14, 5.15 volts. And just to confirm that, just so everyone can see, I'm going to put my meter in and I'm going to tap into ground and 5 volts. As you can see, 5.16 volts coming in for my USB type C port. Okay, now for something interesting. Let me unplug this. Now I'll plug in this USB cable. which is from my desktop. Look at that. This is a USB type 2 port and it's pulling in about 4.9 volts. Once again, let's confirm that. 4.91 volts and it's working. The same 330 ohm resistor, no problems. So that puzzled me and it led me to dig deeper. And these are my theories, my scientific theories that I've come up with. So let's move this just up here for now. Jonathan in London, who's one of my community members, posted on a comment on my stream from this morning, a theory he had, which I started looking into. He pointed me to a data sheet from Adafruit of the SK. 6812 and he wanted to point out to me that the signal input threshold has a maximum of 3.4 volts and a minimum of 1.6. Interestingly on this data sheet it mentions that the supply voltage for the chip is at 5.2. There's no mention of 3.3 volts anywhere. I have a different data sheet to this one as you can see here, this data sheet is revision number one of the SPC 6812 spec. My data sheet is revision number two of the same spec. Now, I don't really know how accurate this is. And on this particular data sheet, it also has 5.2 here, but in a different section, it mentions 3.5 volts to 5.5 volts. So not 3.3, which is interesting. Now Jonathan's theory was that because of this range here, 3.4 and 1.6, so with the WS2812Bs, they have, here's the data sheet for that, as you can see, they have a particular requirement where the input voltage level for the signal needs to be minimum of 0.7 what VDD is and maximum 0.3 of what VDD is. But there's no mention of any of this on the SK data sheets. It's only on the WS2812B data sheets. So I'm not really sure if this comes into play. And I just lost a light again. <laughs> wow. Just like last time. So clearly there's a discrepancy between the WS2812B and the SK6812 and they're supposed to be clones of each other, or this is supposed to be a clone of the WS, but there's no mention of any type of thresholds like that anywhere. But my theory is that because I'm running at a higher voltage and the resistor is dropping the maximum voltage coming in for the signal line, that what I'm actually doing is if I have VDD, let's say that's at 5.0 volts and I've got let's call it signal for data and let's say that's at 3.3 volts there's a delta here between the two right and as I increase the 
resistor value on this, I'm dropping the voltage. And my desktop is running at 4.9 volts, so the threshold is still okay between these two values. But my other machine is running at 5.16 volts, and the threshold is too high, the delta between the two of them. Now, I can't get any concrete data anywhere on what those values should be. And if I plug in the 0 0.7 and 0 0.3 from the WS2812Bs, I'm still within the threshold. Just, but I'm still within the threshold. So I thought, okay, right now I'm just plugging two USB cables in. Let's see if I can simulate this in a more scientific way. So, what I'm going to do is pull my USB cable out. I'm going to turn on my bench power supply. I'm going to stick ground over here. 5 volts over here. And I'm going to start off the voltage at 4.9 volts. I'm going to turn it on. Okay, 4.9 volts, just like my desktop USB, it's running fine. So if I turn it off and I now change it to be 5 volts, turn it on, it's also running fine. If I now switch it to 5.1 volts, it's working. But if we keep watching, you see that flicker? Occasionally we're getting flickering, not that flickering, <laughs> obviously. Wait till we get to here, you might see a flicker now and again. There you go, just then. It's definitely on the threshold of too much voltage coming into the chips for the VDD compared to the amount of voltage coming in on the signal line. And if I take it one step further and make it, I'm actually just going to make it 515. Turn it on, it doesn't work anymore. Goes crazy. Christmas lights. So the higher the voltage going into VDD and the bigger the gap between the VDD and the signal coming in, the voltage coming in for the data, the more problems we're seeing. As I dropped that resistor down to a zero ohm resistor, it was technically lifting the maximum voltage coming in for the signal, which was making the gap smaller between the signal voltage max and VDD. And as I was putting a higher resistor in line there, it was dropping. And it was therefore increasing the delta, and we started getting problems. So if I was to remove that resistor now and stick a zero ohm resistor, I believe this configuration right now would start to work again. So where does that leave me? Well, there are several things I can do. Now that I believe I know what the resistor change was doing, because at the end of the stream, just putting a zero ohm resistor there wasn't okay with me because I didn't understand why that was working. Now I believe I do. So I can solve this just by putting a zero ohm resistor and everything should be fine. I could alternately stick a five volt regulator on here as well and make sure that I cap the VDD coming in from the USB to 5.0 volts no matter how high it is. So that way having a, a 330 resistor or a 430 resistor won't make any difference because the delta will still be smaller because the VDD is lower. Or I could just rework the board and power the VDD from 3.3 volts. Now the problem I've got with that is that's below spec. It may work, but it's below spec on the data sheet. Data sheet clearly says, if you can even read it with the lights, 3.5 volts, and I don't have 3.5 volts. These are designed to run off 5 volts. Let me stop this flickering. There we go. So I believe I'm going to solve this just with a resistor change, and I'm going to be happy with the results. But it was important for me to work out why the resistor change was making the difference. And now I think I understand it.
happy to get feedback from everyone on uh, whether you think I'm correct or not. It was a, an interesting long stream again this morning, and I'm glad we tend to always get to a, a good result at the end. Thanks to everyone who actually watched the stream that was there live or is watching the stream later on, the recording of it. I am going to go work on a different project now <laughs> and uh, take a break from this. Thank you all for watching. I will catch you all next time.